So who can give me the first equation they got when they multiplied equation 1, A1 by 2? Sean? 8x plus 2y equals 2. 8x plus 2y equals 2. Okay, who can give me... Oh, it's not showing up for you. One second, I got you. So, equation 2. When you multiplied everything by negative 5, what'd you get, Cam? Wait, oh. oh never mind. I, I did not do it by negative well, just do it with me real quick then. So, 4x times negative 5? Negative 5. 4x times? No. Negative 20. Negative 20x. K y times negative 5? Negative 10. Well, it's just a y. It's a y. So, y times negative 5? Negative 5. Negative 5y. And then 1 times negative 5? There we go. And then equation three multiplied by one half. JP? 2x plus one half y equals one half. When you multiply by half, how many x's did you get? Oh, I got one. Oh, wait, I did the wrong one. I got one half x. You just leave it up there. Thanks. One half x plus y equals nine halves. That's what I got. Or something equivalent. Now, here's, here's the big idea that I need to ask you. That equation A, every time you changed it, what did you notice about your graph on decimals? Who can summarize that real nice for me? Is the last equation supposed to be one half at the end? Because we're not doing equation B. Oh, it is yeah, supposed to. It is supposed to be one half. I I did it on equation B. Two x plus one. Okay, there it is. So, thanks for thanks for showing me that. Wait a second. I did half for the whole thing. It should be two x. That's one half y equals one half. <laughs> I did it all. I did it all to equation B. All right. So there's equation A. So big idea. These three equations. When you slapped them in the decimals, what did you notice? I. Yeah, they're all the same equation, right? We know this because a big idea we've been working on in this unit is when we do something to one side and the other, we get a new equation that is equivalent. equivalent. Big idea there, they're the same. Also, what's true if we add up the left side of a system and the right side of a system? The resulting equation is also true. Those two big ideas are everything for us, okay? I'm going to doctor this up a tad, friends, because I think... We, we know too much to even look at this already. We know too much already. It, it's a good thing. So as I'm looking at this, we've already established that we know how to make equivalent fraction or equivalent equations by multiplying the same thing on both sides. And we notice adding the left side and adding the right side makes a new true equation. Um, right now, I still, still see a couple computers out. We shouldn't need any more computers. So if I want to solve this, what's something I can do? I want you to turn and talk to your partner. I want you to find three different ways you could solve this with your partner. Okay, so three, two, one. Eyes on me or the board and mouths closed, please. Okay, I want one way I could solve this. Vinny, give me one. Adding. Adding what? Adding the variable. So you're not wrong, I'm just asking for clarification. So you're thinking adding? Okay, I'm going to see if someone can clarify on that. Yeah, I don't, I know what I'm thinking. I just don't know how to say it. Okay. Who's got a way for me? I've got four ways, actually. I only asked for three, hoping you would switch things up. Ivy, give me one. Um, sorry, I'm going to go with my guess. Okay. Um, elimination. So elimination. So... Yes, I think there are two different ways I can use elimination. What's one thing I would have to do to use elimination, though? What's one thing I could do? Yeah, but they don't cancel. So if I add these together, currently I have 5x plus 3y equals 10, which is true, but it doesn't help me solve for x or y. Okay. So... I could multiply something, okay? So what would you suggest trying to multiply? Like everything by, or the bottom equation by one half. Multiply equation B 
by negative one half or something. Um, That'd work. Because then my Ys would cancel. I like that. What's another thing I could do? With a, what's another way I could make elimination happen? Someone else give me another way, Sophia. I'm going to say multiply equation A by negative 2. What would cancel if I multiplied equation A by negative 2? The Y. The Y. I'd have a negative 2Y and a positive 2Y. What's another thing I could multiply by to get rid of something? 4? Yeah, what are you thinking, Sophia? Which one? Yeah, I can multiply equation B by negative 4. That'll get my, my X's to cancel. I could multiply, and another one, maybe you would see it, maybe one, and it'd be not the easiest way, but multiply equation A by negative one-fourth. Yeah. That would turn my 4X into a negative X. Yeah. So those are our elimination choices. I personally, I'd probably, I would probably multiply everything here by negative two. Yes, sir. That'd probably be mine. Uh, the other thing, though, that is actually not too difficult on these that we could consider, like on a test, if you don't have to use a method, is substitution. Substitution. Because this first equation could be y equals negative 4x plus 1, pretty easy. And I could then substitute that value in for y. Why can I do that? Where two lines cross, what's true about that point? Y is the same. The other thing I could do is I could solve the second equation pretty easy for x. x is negative 2y plus 9, and I could substitute that in for x. So solve for y or solve for x. These are, like, that's a lot of options, right? These are all tools in the tool belt. Let's just focus on one. Let me doctor up our page. Let's focus on elimination. And when we focus on this elimination method, we need to keep our big ideas in mind. We can make new, infinite new equations if we do the same thing to both sides, right? So we can make one of these equations, an equation that will work for us to have cancellation happen. So I'm actually going to choose to multiply everything up here by negative 2. And that's going to eliminate my y. Here's y. Negative 8x minus 2y equals negative 2. Before I go on, is everybody clear that this new equation is just the first equation a different way? Mm -hmm. You did it in your warm-up. You've improved it on the decimals graphing calculator. I like to put just a simple line through it so I can still see it, but I don't want to use it on accident. Yeah, I remember when you said that last one. Yeah. Then I'm going to add these together. So x and negative 8x is negative 7x. Because I did this with intention, my y's cancel, and I'm left with a 7. So what does x have to equal? x has to equal negative 1. And then I can put this in any equation. I'm going to choose to put it right there. Negative 1 plus 2y equals 9, which means y has to equal 5. And this is not my answer. My answer is the ordered pair. Negative 1, 5, because the answer is the point in which these two lines cross. But again, do you see how it boiled down to those two big ideas? I can make an equivalent equation by doing the same thing to both sides. And if I add up everything on the left and everything on the right, the resulting equation is true. That's all it is. If you try to memorize what steps to do when it looks like this, this test could be a struggle. If you say, what do I know? How can I use it? Not much of a struggle, okay? So again, I want to look at this system with you and have you come up with what you think I should do to make this work. I can take, I can think of two good things. One thing is just kind of speaking to me a little bit. But if I wanted to get rid of an X or a Y, which one do you think we should get rid of? X. I'm thinking get rid of X. Brennan, you thinking first equation or second equation? Um, first. first equation. Okay, so if we get rid of it on the first equation, we multiply everything by... Five fourths. I'm all right with that. Or if we want to get rid of it on the second equation, we multiply everything there by four fifths. So let's let's just do it to it. Five fourths. Okay. So that would give me x plus so 15 halves y equals 75 fourths. 
Yeah, this one ain't pretty, but it's all right. We're not going to do the whole thing, actually. The whole point of this is, once I've done this, what cancels now? The X. The X's cancel. And did I change my equation or just change the way it looks? Just change the way it looks. Yeah, and remember, we proved that with the warm-up. We just changed the way it looks. I want to look at one more with you that's not in your notes, okay? So this is like one that's not in your notes. What I'd like you to do is talk with your partner and devise at least one way you would go about using the elimination method on this one. Okay, I've got, I've got two ways. Who can give me one way they'd like to go about this? <laughs> Sophia, tell me that one you were just saying, actually. Um, okay. Well, you multiply the bottom equation with the bottom by 1.5. Oh, that's not the one I just heard. But yes, that would work. Yeah, I can multiply everything here by 1.5 1, 1. or 3 halves. Okay. And that would give me negative 3x minus... What? 6y equals 21. And we're not going to do the whole thing because we've done this. But once we've, done, once we've gotten here, what's going to cancel? The, the, everything's going to cancel. we got an issue here, right? Look what's going to happen. 0 equals 36. No solution. This means there is no solution. no solution. Which, what does that mean in context? It's two lines that don't cross. Zeph. They're parallel. They're parallel lines. They have to be parallel lines. So, I'm just showing you you have two, reason, two ways to know here that there's no solution. The math worked out that 0 equals 36, which is not true. I'm going to show you another way in a moment. Did anybody else get a different way for things to cancel? I was kind of... So the other... Brennan, did you come up with another um, one? If you multiplied 2x by 3 over 2... Like if you multiplied That's what we did. By, yeah, was there another way? Rap. Um, you could multiply the top equation by 2. Yeah, this is a something I heard some people talking about, changing them both. So I could it? multiply that by yeah. 2 and 3. Can you do that? I can't. Yeah, yeah okay, that well, loud? let's ask, I got a question for you, Cam and Meredith. If you multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, do you get the same equation that just looks different? Yeah. yeah. Is there any rule saying you can just do that with some and not others? <laughs> no? Well, no? We just hadn't seen it before, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. The, the principle, if I do this and I get 6x plus 12y equals 30, and I get negative 6x minus 12y equals 42, does that make it not true? No, it's still true. And if I add these together, I still get something that's no solution. Now, that's not a, that's not, this is all based on math principles we've established. Now, I need to show you something, though. Here's another way we can know that there's no solution for these and that they're parallel lines. Here's the other way. What, is, what equation form is the easiest way to tell what the slope and y-intercept are? Probably slope-intercept form. Okay. So watch, watch what's going to happen when I get these both in slope-intercept form. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it kind of fast because I'm just trying to make a point right here. So if I'm solving for y on the top equation, right, I'm just rewriting my equation. I get negative one-half x plus five halves. Okay. If I do the second equation and I solve for y... Remember we did this on the homework check? You had to solve for y to give me the slope and y-intercept. It was also on the homework where you had to match stuff. I had 1 half x minus 7 halves. So looking at my two equations, what do you notice about them? I messed up here. This shouldn't be, one, one shouldn't be negative, not the other positive. Where did I mess that up? They have the same slope but different y-intercepts. They're supposed to have the same slope, but mine don't. Let me check it out.
Guys, this did not give us the parallel lines we thought they did. Or, I lost my negative. Anyway, I lost my negative. Well, no, it's all right. It's why it was true and then not true later. It's all right. When I, did, when I erased, I lost the negative. It's all right. So, big idea, though. Let's go to the big idea. The big idea I want to take away from all this. Yeah, we're getting less than 17 in with this. So here's all the big ideas. If we do it to one side and the other. Yes. Equivalent. They're exactly the same, right? If we add up left and right sides of systems... The new equation is what? True. true. Equivalent. Not equivalent, it's true. Oh. Right? Because there's... And, and when, we, when we have that truth, we can use elimination. With intent, right? We can manipulate our equations to make an X or Y go away. All right? The next big idea. What are the three options for how many answers there are for a system? What's one of them? No solution. No solution. We just saw that. And no solution happened with parallel lines, parallel lines different y-intercepts. Okay? They start at different places, right? We talked about that. Someone starts racing ahead of me, but I'm the same speed. I'll never catch it. Ryan, what's another option? Infinitely many solutions. Infinite solutions. And when does that happen? Same line, so that means same slope and y-intercept. That, that, those are my favorite ones. And then what's the last type, Meredith? One. Oh, damn. It's not very kind. Oh, my one solution. solution. One solution. Okay. And what needs to be true to get one solution? Um, they need right. one solution. Yeah, so anything with a different slope. That's it. Anything with a different slope, so I was going to cross once. Guys, that's like everything that you would need to know for lessons one through 16 to get ready for the quiz, actually. Everything that I do procedure-wise is all based on these same ideas. Same ones. No different. 